Hello everyone, welcome to my next video. And in this one, I want to start talking about manual building process for your embedded projects. And in this case, using STM32 microcontrollers. Up until now, you I've been using the STM32 cube ID, which is in the background. And it's a pretty good way to develop all your projects and never have to really worry about anything besides writing correct code and configuring correct initialization in the CubeMX software. But when you try to share your code or maybe try to make it a bit more portable and not just depend on a certain version of an IDE which might go out of spec in a few future releases and stops working, you can make it not dependent on a particular IDE to a certain extent. And you can separate your writing code environment like your IDE or a simple text editor, your compiler tools and your debug tools. And all of those things are just what an IDE is. It's just a collection of all the convenient tools on one place. They have Windows, Mac OS and Linux installations. But for today, I'm going to talk to you how you can do it a little bit more manually. In this video, I'm going to be introducing make and manual compilation and give you in the end a preview of how to manually compile straight out of your QBMX. And in the future videos, uh, and those are going to be the one that actually we're going to make the file on CMake in order to build our uh, entire project from scratch in order to compile it anywhere with just a few simple command line tools. Because I'm using Linux and as you can see, I'm using virtual machine with Fedora 34 for the purpose of this demonstration. So you can see all the uh, applications that need to be installed uh, right from scratch, no other applications in the background. So you can replicate this as close as you can. Uh, I'm going to list all the tools that you have to install on your distribution or to find the equivalence to those. And I'm going to show you uh, as we go along all the versions so you can compare if you might have a bit of older versions. All these tools can be downloaded directly from websites as well. So let's start. For first thing first, let uh, me talk to you a bit about Make. Uh, and show you what the make is all about by firstly showing you uh, uh, quickly how could we manually compile a simple project. And I have a simple applications and a console with three files, main.c, test.c and test.h. The test.c and test.h house these two functions, the get random number and get max random number, depending on some seed. And if you were to compile this into an executable, we firstly have to compile both of these source files, so these are the C and H file, uh, only the C files, into a so-called object file. So those are the object files called the .o. By that, we need to use a compiler in order to compile these files. And to do that, using the GCC compiler, which can be installed uh, in multiple Linux distributions along with uh, Windows and Mac, it can be called by GCC. This is the version that I have. So this is 11.1 for the Fedora. And if I use gcc.c and the name of the file, let's say main.c, this is going to compile that file into an object file. So in this case, main.o. So this is all the code over here. The main function is in binary code. And this will be used later to stitch together the final executable. For next, we need to get the object files for all these functions as well, which are housed in the test.c file. That's why we call the compiler again, but this time with test.c. We can see that now we have also the test.o file. Now, finally, to execute the linking stage, which is the final stage of compilation or cre creating your executable, we call gcc again, but with this time with dash o. So this way we said we want to create an output file and the name of the output file, let's say, will, will be ex executable. And the input files are going to be main.o main and test.o. In the main.o, there's already the main function, which is usually the default entry point to any program. So you have to have the main.o and not just test.o. And we execute this and we got an executable. We can uh, start it up and we get a result. We can start it multiple times and we get the same result because we're entering the same seed into the get random number generator. Great. 
But now we have a bit, little bit of littering in our source folder. Main O, test O and executable. And if you want to separate it and maybe add a little more flexibility to automatically add new files and compile everything with lots of options. As you saw, our compilation step didn't include many uh, different uh, options and flags, which can be added to increase the performance and the optimization of your code. For that, we can turn to the aforementioned make file. So here I have a project which is the same copy of this one. It just has the additional of a make file. Make file is just a file without a suffix with a capital M usually, but can also be a lowercase m. And it is used in conjunction with the tool called make. Uh, it can be invoked like this. So this is the version that I have, 4.3. And make tool is an automatic tool that can help you automate the building process of your project by compiling lots, of, uh, lots and lots of uh, source files and maintaining the compilation and then also doing other stuff. You can issue other commands, any shell command that you can execute in a terminal, the make file can execute. It also has a system of priorities and conditional statements regarding the execution of different files. Let me show you the make file for this version. So the make file has a few parts uh, as I like to see it, but the most important are the all and the clean. These are the targets. So this is what you want to do. All is the default one. It's, it's the one if you just call the make without any options. If you just call make, all is going to be executed. The first part of any target is the prerequisite or the condition. This is the condition that has to be met in order to continue the execution. The executions are on the lines separated by a tab. Be careful not to use the, uh, the space. So is disable the use spaces instead of tabs in your IDE because make files are sensitive to spaces only you have to use tabs. So in this case, in order to execute this echo command, this prerequisite has to be made either by being up to date or just having to exist. In this case, we're saying that some form file with something in the front has to exist. So what is this part over here? This is a macro expansion, in this case, or variable expansions, because the build dir is defined up here. In this case, this is a, a, some kind of definition. You could do it without the colon as well. This is saying that build dir is a variable which has the string build. And we wish to create a directory in which we want to put all the executable, all the object files and all the other files that you can uh, also get with uh, further development. In this case, the first part that is executed with any make command in this folder is uh, make dir. So in Windows, it might be different, and but on Linux, it's make dir. So create the directory with this name. And this is how you expand a variable. So variable name surrounded by parentheses and in front of it, there's a dollar sign. So this is how you expand a variable. And the same, you can see it all over the place. So what we have to do. So when you just type in make and enter, it's going to check for this executable, but it doesn't know how to make the executable if it's not there. Therefore you need a cooking recipe for it. If I search for this string, here, you can see it highlighted it on the bottom over here. So this is the recipe also like a target for creating the build slash executable. And it has yet another uh, prerequisite. In this case, it's a macro expansion of OBJ. What is an OBJ? Well, OBJ is just a list of strings of file names. In this case, we want to have oral object files, which are just two in this case, main.o and test.o inside that build directory. So build slash main.o and build slash test.o. So we're saying that this list of files has to exist in order to continue with creating the executable. Okay, so how do we create these files? Well, this is the line above, so the last line. So any file inside the build slash name.o, so this name can be any, is created by prerequisite of a name of a file.c, so any C file, and the update state of the certain headers. So if you change something in a header file, this is gonna force all the C files to recompile, which can be useful, but if you have lots of header files and different uh, source files that not all 
include the same header file, you might do this a little bit different. For these demonstrations, this is plenty good. So what has to happen? This has to exist and also this C file has to exist. And in this case, this is a, some kind of a recursive rule for all object files, which are going to be included in the build directory. And then when this is satisfied, the exec execution is commanding. So in this case, we are calling the C compiler with this expansion of the CC. In this case, CC is just an expansion. If you write CC dot version, we get that it's a CC, which is just a GNU C compiler. Uh, we could also use over here GCC manually and you can see it's uh, highlighted at orange, but we can leave it at CC for now. So what is it? It's calling the C compiler with some flags, which are some default options that are present for either the version of the language or some other compilation optimizations. Then we're setting include path so it knows where the header files are, which is the local folder, and then the option C to compile. Then this dollar sign arrow to the left, which means the first prerequisite, which is this one. So this one is the input and the output is the name of the current target, which in this case is builder slash name of the file dot O. So this is going to export this name file with the input file, which is the first prerequisite. And this is going to be created for every C and O combination. After that, all the object files, which are listed over here, are going to be created and this prerequisite will be met. And then we can execute this point, which is the same, except over here, we're saying that for all of the prerequisites are going to be inputs. So these are all the input files. Dash O means that we're going to create an output file. And then with the name of the target, which is builder slash executable. So this is going to be the name of the file. So this means that executable will be put inside the build directory and its name will be executable. The only one that I haven't mentioned is the clean target, which is over here. And it just basically execute the remove command to remove the entire build folder. So it's very neat. Maybe uh, the one that I haven't touched is this phony target. This is just saying that all and clean targets, which are these two, are going to be executed no matter what, because make is smart. And if it knows that this prerequisite is already met, it might not execute anything. So let's say that we run make, finally. As you can see, it ran the compiler for both object files, and then it ran also the final executable, and it said finished, because it already finished the all. But if you run it again, nothing was compiled, because these uh, dependencies or these prerequisites were already made, and the, the skip was uh, skipped, and then we just printed echo. A little tip, if you put this at before, it suppresses the printing of the command. So if I run make, it firstly prints the command that it did, just like it did over here. But if you add the at, it suppresses it. So this is basically a really a fast speed introduction to make. So hopefully I gave you some idea how you can use the make to create simple programs and it's not just for building, it's also for maintaining code, run the code cleanups and code checkups and uh, all the other shell available tools. To show you a bit, I also tested in on C++. So this is the make file for C++, which is just the same, but all files are named CPP instead of C and we can still run it. And in this case, I'm using CXX and CPP flex, which is using the GP, uh, G++, which is the C++ compiler. It's the same one. And then for the end, I want to show you what you can get from finally the cube. So if you use cube MX, which I have installed over here, instead of cube IDE, you can export your project for any IDE that is supported by the manufacturer. Here I have an empty project for the F407 discovery the chip. And if I go to the project manager, where I can set the name and the project location, I can also set the toolchain IDE, which is usually disabled in STM32 cube IDE. And here you can choose any IDE or just the make file. What this will do is instead of creating an entire project, it will just give you a make file and all the other necessary uh, libraries that you need to build your project. And speaking of libraries, you want to go here in the code generator 
and, and enter this copy only the necessary library files. So you don't get an entire barrage of different files, only the ones that you need for this configuration of the project. Generate code and everything is gonna be set. And to show you what happens is over here. And in this case, we need to start compiling for the ARM. So we're compiling on an x86 platform or a 64-bit x86 platform for an ARM M core uh, architecture, which means that we're building on a different system than for what we're gonna build for. And GCC is by default a compiler that only compiles for the current operating system. Whereas something we need is a cross compiler or a compiler that compiles across architectures for a different architecture. And that's why you need to download the ARM non-EIB GCC version, which is the cross compiler for ARM. In this case, uh, on Fedora, this is all the utility that I have downloaded that is used for the ARM compilations. Make sure to search for your equivalence on your distribution or your platform. In this case, this is the GCC compiler. This is the uh, C++ compiler. These are some utilities and libraries that you will need, uh, so like standard libraries. In the folder, you get core, drivers, and the .ioc, which is the cube file, which is like in CubeMX, but now you can choose the folder which will be put all the prerequisites. This is this uh, line over here. I Before in the project, I entered here cube, so that's why I have the cube folder over here. And inside that cube folder, you get the make file, startup file, which is just the assembly file for the particular processor, and the linker script. And if we take a look at the make file supplied, it's quite large because of course it's automatically generated, but it has a bunch of variables and settings that are set, it can be changed manually. So you can see here's the name of the target, so this is going to be name of the executable, some debug options, all the source files manually entered over here. So if you want to add your own, you have to enter them over here and don't forget this slash over here, all the assembly files and all the variables. So you can see the variables don't need to be only path or name of files, but can also be a whole command. So in this case, bin is a command that calls object copy and to create a final binary output. Some CPU, FPU specific configurations includes, so you have your own include files. You might want to include them in this pattern over here by dash I and then path. And path is always relative to the file uh, of the make file, so the path of the make files. In this case, this make file is in cube. That's why you have to go one back to get to the drivers and then go forward to the include path. Some additional flags, so these are different options that can optimize the compilation. And then right at the end is all the compilation. So here is the all target, and this is the one that you'll be using, all and clear. And all is not doing anything, so you can see, as in my case, there is no execution apart of this finish command. There's only prerequisites for ELF, for hex, and the bin files, which are generated in the end. So let's demonstrate that. So let's clean it. Uh, make. Oh, so we have to go into the cube file. So let's run make clean. And I'll make. And you can point in .j and the number of cores you wish to dedicate. So I have 12 threads on my system. So I'm giving a thread, so it's gonna go really fast. So as you can see, this is invoking the GCC compiler for each of the files uh, that needs to be compiled. So this is that list in the beginning. And in the end, the ELF file was produced over here. So it, it, it ran the, uh, the option size in order to show you the size of the file. And then it ran the object copy to create the hex and binary files. And we can trace this back to this file. So the first prerequisite is ELF, the seconds are hex and bin, so we can go down and see the recipes for ELF, hex and bin file, where the hex and bin files also already have a prerequisite to ELF file. So ELF file is the first one that has to be met, and its prerequisites are the list of objects, which are listed on the top, which is over here. So all the C files that need to be compiled needs to be present, and these files can be compiled with these two rules. All the C files are compiled with this rule. So for each object files relating to a C file, this is how to compile it. And for each object files, which originates from a assembly file, is compiled this way. 
And then when well, all these objects are made, the executable is created by this command. So this is calling as before the output file with the name of the build slash target name dot ELF. And in the end, this is the size command, which was abstracted over here. So the size command to show you the size of the ELF file. And then when this prerequisite is met, these two can be executed. So the ELF and the build directory has to be met and the hex tool and the binary tools are called with the first prerequisite as an input file. And if we go on the top, hex and bin, its input is the first file and it's outputted to hex or the binary. So we see now by the uh, output of our console and by reading the make file, what is the process of everything. Also, here's the clean command to clean the entire uh, build folder out. So this is really simple, but it's a lot. So there's a lot of steps in here. We are not going to be writing manually make files, obviously, because they're already provided to us by the manufacturer. So we could call it uh, quits. So if this is all you need, well, you just need the, all the ARM non EAB tools, which were listed before. So binutils, C, C++, and new lib. And uh, you will have to manually enter new include files over here and new source files over here if you have any changes. But other than that, it's provided to by a manufacturer. So do not be long. In the next video, we're going to be using CMake, which we're going to talk about. And with that, we're going to make it easier to uh, take existing project template for compiling and modify it for different uh, processor. Because I have made the difference between a uh, F103 and F407 processor make file configurations. And this is a diff between these two files. So this one is an, I think it's an M3 core, but it doesn't have a floating point unit. Meanwhile, this one is an F4 core uh, and it has a floating point. And you can see the only difference on the beginning is the naming of the folder path. So this is F1XX and this one is just F4XX. Okay, so this is to be expected. Also, the startup files have different names. Then the CPU uh, uh, marking has, of course, the, C the different name because this is the M3 and this is M4. And then the next one, so the F4, this one doesn't have anything but this one has an FPU. So it has a floating point unit. That's why it's specified this way. Also, uh, the, F, uh, the F3 the f core doesn't have uh, any of the floating point hardware. That's why this one has hard over here as indicating that it uses the hardware floating point. Other than that, other is just naming differences. So the target name is different. The includes paths are different because this one is F1XX and this one is F4XX and the flash, the linker scripts are differently named. So you see only here are the actual differences. Everything else is just in the naming differences. So these are some of, some of the clues that we will be using to create CMake configurations to automatically compile everything. And so you can quickly adapt your configurations for any uh, M core of the STM32 that you can. And remember, you always have the options to export the make file from the STM32 cube MX, so you can see how they have done their configuration, so you can just copy these configurations into your own project. So I hope this was helpful. Please uh, view more other videos on uh, Makefile and Make tools, so you'll be ready for the next video when we'll be using also Make to invoke other tools to build our project and make our code look prettier. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.